Hello everyone, welcome to Powerful Couple Journey. Today we are going to talk about the checklist for the waiver of foreign residence requirement, especially for those J1 teachers from the Philippines, just like me, wanting to get their waiver through exceptional hardship. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. <music> As a J-1 teacher, it's really hard to think that we need to have a waiver even though we are already married to our U.S. citizen spouse. A lot of my J-1 teacher friends that are in our Facebook group, J-1 Waiver Helping Hands, are also facing the same dilemma. But thank goodness we have this guide that I prepared in order for us to have ideas at least to help us prepare the process, especially submitting the forms. So what are the forms that has to be submitted if you are married to your U.S. citizen spouse, granting that you are single or you already had the papers like divorce or annulment filed in the Philippines and it's an easy process. So these are the forms that I submitted with the USCIS. And these are the forms I submitted with the Department of State. Now going to the checklist, so we need to have the birth certificate of the J-1 holder, the birth certificate of your U.S. citizen spouse, the copies of your visas, the copy of your I-94. It should be the most recent one. Just go type through Google I-94 and you're going to see the website that you have to go. If you already submitted your forms that I had mentioned, just like the I-130, if you have your form 797, which is the receipt notice, then include that one as well. Prepare all the documents. Make sure you have three copies. Copies for you to submit to the USCIS, copies for you to submit to the Department of State, and copies for you to have in order for you to have all your files ready. Most especially if you are trying to get your papers and the USCIS officer needs for an interview. You need to also have a copy of your passport, whether it's photocopy or notarized, it's really up to you. You need to have a letter of verification, employment verification. You could get it through your supervisor or your HR if you are a J-1 teacher. Prepare your money order for your filing fee with your Form I-612 and money order as well for the DS-3035. All these mentioned can be seen in the USCIS.gov and travel.state.gov for the Department of State. You also need to have your monthly budget. If you wanted to access the forms, especially the monthly budget, go to powerfulcouplejourney.com and you will see the sample monthly budget that we have wherein my husband's money and my money has been joined together in one joint bank account in order for the USCIS and the adjudicating officer in the Department of State to say that we are really a real couple and we are putting our finances together, which really is a big help during the filing of your evidences. If you have your US citizen child, you could also have their birth certificate proof of copy of your marriage license or marriage certificate now this one right here you need to have at least four original copies of your marriage certificate or just notarize that one in our case we went to the clerk of court and we asked for four copies one we submitted to the uscis an original the other one is in the department of state and then one is for our copy and then during the time we also stash somewhere the important files we have in a lockbox in our house. So just make sure that everything is ready. And if you wanted to have a photocopy, you just had it notarized. You also need to prepare the copy of your recent pay stubs. It should be three months. So if you have like bi-weekly or bi-monthly, make sure you have all the copies that you have three months worth of pay stub. You also need to have letters from your friends and families. Also, the sworn statement of your husband, aside from your own sworn statement, that 
says the hardship that you're going to be having if the 212e is imposed to you so remember the hardship should be with the uscis and not with the j1 holder it has to be put in your statement of reason what are the hardships just like emotional financial mental physical psychological hardship everything that you can think of that is unique to your case you have to think of the totality of circumstances because that's where the uscis and the adjudicating officer or the review waiver division will say that they were going to give you a favorable recommendation and your waiver through the form i-612 there are a lot of things that you have to prepare if you wanted to see the full checklist, 21 lists as a guide. Go to powerfulcouplejourney.com and you'll see not just the guide but also our monthly budget, the sworn statement, the statement of reason that is helpful during your journey, especially if you are compelled to do it yourself. I am not an immigration lawyer. This is my real experience of submitting do-it-yourself and I'm so happy that God was able to grant me this one and this is my time to share to my fellow J1 teachers, especially from the Philippines. You all know that the Exchange Visitor Program or the EVP in the Philippines is really having their new guidelines and it's hard to pinpoint what are the things that we have to prepare in order for them to release the no objection statement so the other way that filipino j1 teachers were thinking was to get the eh whether it's an exceptional hardship to their u.s citizen spouse or exceptional hardship to their u.s citizen child but in my case i was able to get my waiver through exceptional hardship with my U.S. citizen spouse. It has a lot of weight because it's already a, an American which is born and raised here in the United States of America. If you think that this video helps you, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this to our fellow J1 teachers and anyone who needs immigration ideas. And I cannot give you a legal advice, but I'm here to really share my inputs when it comes to the immigration process as a J1 teacher. This is Emery. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. God bless everyone.